Hello, how are you? As all of us AutoCAD users know, we draw almost everything in model space in a scale of one to one. No matter how big the things are, whether that's bridges or ships or roads or large buildings or even small buildings, we draw everything at a scale of one to one. Now, how can we bring these enormous things onto paper? We could, if we wanted to, print directly out of model space. But AutoCAD has made available to us a very powerful tool which makes it a lot easier to set up drawings, especially ones if we want to have diff uh, parts of our drawing shown at different scales. So overviews may be 1 to 100, 1 to 500, details 1 to 20, 1 to 50, 1 to 10, 1 to 2, 1 to 1, whatever we like. And basically as many different views as we want. Now, how do we do this? Well, we go into paper space and set up our virtual sheet of paper. Now, imagine we have a sheet of paper like this. Now, on this sheet of paper, I already have my drawing frame and my drawing title, and I've drawn a couple of viewports also on, the, on my sheet. And this, of course, would be in paper space. Now, we could imagine it like this. If we want to actually see what is in model space, we have to activate our, our um, viewports, and then it's as if we've actually kind of cut a hole or two in our piece of paper. And through these holes, we can then see what we've actually drawn in our model space. And we can control these viewports in such a way that we scale out, scale in, look at this part, look at that part, and even all kinds of other exciting things, since of course these aren't just holes, these are actually uh, things which are programmed by the computer, don't ask me how, that is rocket science to me, um, but it gives us all kinds of wonderful possibilities. How does that work? Well, let's have a look. I'm in model space right now and actually ready to start setting things up, ready to print. I have my, my drawings there with, with details and everything. Let's see how I can get that on paper. In order to do that, as we've just mentioned, I need to change into my layout or paper space. And I do that by clicking down here at the bottom on my next layout. It could be that you have two there. I already have a viewport which is here to be seen. What does AutoCAD do? It, unless you've set it up in, in some other way, it will basically just show everything which you've drawn in the one viewport regardless of scale. It will simply scale everything so that you can see it. Now I want to just see this area here. How do I do that? Well, first I have to activate my viewport. In this situation, I'm in paper space. I'm actually working on the surface of the paper, as it were. So I have here my drawing frame, my drawing title. It's already set up, ready to print. These are subjects which are covered in other videos. And I can actually change the, the size of my viewport. How can I change, though, the content? both with regard to what is shown and the scale and so on. Well, I need to activate my my viewport. How do I do that? Well, I can actually just do a double click with my left mouse button somewhere in the viewport and then it's active. I can zoom here in and out. I can change the, the content. Double click to the right or basically outside of the viewport and I'm in proper paper space again. We can also do that with this button here. If I click there, then I, it changes into model space click again and it changes into paper space. Now I'm still in my layout so in a sense I'm still in paper space. What does that mean then? Well to go back to our illustration of the holes in the paper it's as if this hole is now active and I can sort of reach through the hole and change things in viewport. But it doesn't only mean that I can change a view itself I can actually edit things as well. So if I were to mark these things right click erase they're gone. It's not just I can't see them I have actually erased them as we can see here. If we change back to, to model space, go back to my layout, I'll just use the, the command, oops, and then my objects are, are back where they should be. And let's say I want, to, I want to show this area in a scale of say 1 to 25. So I can zoom in quite normally with my mouse wheel 
and when it's roughly where I want it I can now change the scale. There are various ways to do this. I'm going to use the button down here and click the scale I would like to use. Now I can't see everything. Why not? Well basically my viewport is too small. No problem. Right click outside the viewport, click on the, the viewport itself, stretch using the, the grips here. I'm going to have to be a bit careful here so I don't get things I don't want to see. There we go. Okay, so I have my, my basic viewport. I've shown it what I want to the scale I want. Something I did forget though, if it's active and I move my wheel again, what happens? Well, I change my scale. We don't want that. Once you've set it up in the right scale, you've shown the area that you want, you don't want it moving around and changing. Now you can actually lock this view. I'm going to put it right back to the proper scale and then click on this little lock. And when I now move my mouse wheel, okay, I can zoom in and out, but it's not changing the scale of my viewport, which is actually what I want. Let's move that up to the top left. So I do another double click with my mouse button, the left one, of course, so that I'm in, in paper space. And here I can change the objects, which are, so to speak, on the surface of my paper. Yeah, that's brilliant except there are all kinds of things shown here which I don't actually want to see. And that isn't a problem as long as I've put them on the right layer. So if I activate my viewport again and I, I zoom in here, what do I have? For example, these pieces of glass I don't want to see. If I view, zoom into my details here, there's all kinds of text and, and dimensions and so on, which at a scale of 1 to 25 just appear as ink blobs, and that's not particularly useful. So what I can do is freeze these layers. Now, of course, I'm, I'm about to have some detail viewports as well, so I don't want to globally freeze these layers. I just want to freeze them in this one viewport. I can do it here, here over my layer properties. I've got a couple of layers here, for example, I don't want to see. I'm sorry, the names are all a bit funny in German, but I'm sure that won't bother you too much. So these I don't want to see, so I don't want to turn them off globally or freeze them globally, but in the viewport. Now you notice to the right of this one where it says viewport freeze after the global settings I have quite a number of other viewport settings which I can change and it would actually mean that just in this one viewport the color the line type the line weight and so on will be changed wonderful I don't want to do that right now it's a bit too much detail for this particular drawing but if you want to you can so that's one way of doing things. You can go through here and, and select the layers which you don't particularly want to show in this one viewport. Or you can just zoom in and find things you don't want and freeze them by object. And when you're in the, uh, the viewport, it doesn't freeze things globally. It just freezes them in this one viewport. Now here I have a could say a little problem. I have here detail which I don't want to show at the scale of 1 to 25 but the, these lines are in, in a block and if I click using this uh, command on the block then it just freezes everything and I don't want that. So for that I have to go here to my layer properties manager. There's the particular layer and then the lines have, are no longer to be seen which I don't want to, to have here. I also want rid of that layer and that layer. Good. So actually I'm quite happy with how things are looking now. Uh, just take here and there just to make sure that's, that's everything. Yeah, so that's fine. Now I want some other viewports showing my details. No problem. I go here to my layout register. Let's take another rectangular one if I want to show this detail. So I basically first make the viewport double click with left, zoom into the area which I want to show in detail, set my scale here, let's say 1 to 2, lock it so that I can't change it by zooming in and out, double click outside and now I can use the grips to change the actual size of the viewport. Now you may have noticed that there's a little symbol here which I can click on and I can actually change the scale now. This is new with the 2018 version and the wonderful thing about it is not only does it change the scale of the objects which are shown but also it 
automatically changes the size of the viewport, which is pretty cool. Now you may notice in this uh, viewport there are things which I wouldn't want to see because they're things which are from the overview drawing. These are dimension lines, for example, which just don't mean anything anymore in the, in the detail. And of course I can activate my viewport and use this particular command to make them invisible. But in actual fact there may be other things which I don't really see here properly but which would be seen in other detail viewports. Now how can I change these? Well of course I could go to my layer properties manager or I click outside so that I'm back in paper space and do a double click on the viewport itself and what it does is it opens up model space so that I can actually zoom everywhere and see everything that I want to. So now I can freeze that particular layer. Let's freeze that one as well. Yeah, this doesn't matter because it doesn't appear anywhere in details. And when I'm finished, I can go out of this with minimize viewport. And I'm back to the scale I had before, which is actually the wrong one because I actually want it one to two. There we go. Let's move that somewhere else. Let's put this down here. Okay, now we're going to make another one. Go to Layout, Rectangular, zoom in to the next detail, so approximately how it should be. One to two, double click outside, stretch to the right size, and move it where it should be. Wonderful. Now, of course, I still have the wrong layers shown in this particular viewport, so I could go here and, and change things or go to my layer properties manager or whatever. It's a little bit easier than that, though, because all I need to do is to use match properties, select the viewport which I've already set up correctly, transfer those properties onto my next viewport, and hey presto, the layer setup in this viewport is now exactly the same as this one. Now for this detail, um, it's not actually rectangular, so what can we do? Well, I would do that actually with this command here, polygonal. I'll draw it kind of roughly the right shape, and certainly the right number of, of sides. Zoom in to where the detail is to be found. Change the scale to the right scale. Lock it. Double click outside. Let's change the properties straight away over match properties. There we go. And now what I need to do is use the grips again to put it into the right size and shape. Okay, it's not actually correct because there's another detail which should come in between, but hey, it looks the same anyway and this is just a demonstration. Now in actual fact uh, when I come to print it uh, this this particular uh, layer will be shown and I don't really want that in the details. No problem when I'm finished doing my details all the different viewports I can freeze this layer as well. Go out here over minimize viewport and then just use match properties to correct these viewports as well. Wonderful. Now what happens if I particularly want a, a round viewport or I have a, a polygonal viewport which I've already set up as a shape but isn't a viewport? No problem. I can use a command here, layout, make a viewport using an object and hey presto, my circle becomes a viewport. Double click, match properties from there to there. Recently, AutoCAD has introduced a new command which actually makes things a lot easier. I'm sorry, but for some strange reason, that doesn't actually appear in my English version. The command should actually appear here in this lay layout viewports group. But if you'll excuse it just a moment being in the German version, we go here to Layout, 
here, Ansicht einfügen, that means insert viewport, and makes it actually a lot easier. So I activate the command. It takes us to our model area. I'll zoom here. I say I want to show that, please. Enter. Insert viewport. Mark. Select scale. Finished. Is that cool or is that cool? All I have to do now is adjust my, my layers and so on. But basically, it, it takes us through all of that process a lot quicker. Although at the moment, it only works with rectangular viewports. So that's it, basically. Just to summarize, once we're ready to start setting up our page from model space into paper space, we change to a, a layout, use our command here, rectangular polygonal or ob object to make our viewports or insert a viewport if you are lucky and have that one in your in your program and not like me that it's not there yet. Yeah, you set them up, set up the layers and hey presto, you've got your, your layout. As I said, for the page setup, for the drawing title and the frames, there are other videos where you can see how I, I would recommend doing that. Well, that was it for just now. But if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me. Or if you would like an AutoCAD course, then feel even freer to contact me. The information which is necessary for that will be appearing right now, just there, as well as being in the notes of the video. Feel free also to subscribe for my YouTube channel, and then you won't miss any further videos. And I look forward to seeing you later. Bye. Thank you.